Hey there everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on part two of our Primaris Space Marine series. Uh, these are the Primaris Space Marines out of the Dark Imperium box and uh, I mean they're awesome awesome figures uh, and you can see here that uh, from part one we've got our lieutenant all done up and what I've done is I've basically taken our other elements in here, our uh, captain, our intercessor, or sorry, our inceptor sergeant, and then our hellblaster guy here, and I brought them up to just kind of the pre-wash stage uh, for each of these, uh, each of these uh, models. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just pick on the things that are essentially unique to each of these models. So for the Inceptors, we'll be working on the Assault Bolters, we'll be working on their packs. Uh, for the uh, Captain, of course, we'll be working on his cape and his, uh, he's got kind of a unique backpack as well. And with the Hellblaster guys, uh, their Plasma Incinerators, uh, we're just going to work on that with, um, with, with, with just these guys here. So obviously they're going to be the exact same steps as the rest of our Lieutenant here. However, we just wanted to pick out just the unique things that uh, differentiated these guys from our lieutenant here. So without further ado, we'll get going on here and uh, yeah, looking really forward to getting these guys done. Okay, so we've got our Inceptor Sergeant here and essentially, uh, as I mentioned before, I've basically followed him all up, uh, getting him close to where we were at with the Lieutenant there. And now I'm just going to continue on with the Lead Belcher. So basically I would have done the Gold uh, and then I would have done the Lead Belcher and kind of get it up to speed. And I'm just going to continue on now with the Lead Belcher. So all the functional stuff is all done, the belt clip, everything like that. And now I'm going to be working with the um, the pack, the the assault bolters, all of that stuff. So uh, let's start off with the simple stuff. Uh, because I'm going to echo what's going on with the pack, I'm actually going to do this circle back here, the part of the power pack here. Okay. In addition to that, I'll also do the vent up at the top here. Uh, previous comments from an earlier video, people were freaking out that I didn't thin my paints. Um, I do actually thin my paints. I actually throw in uh, a bit of water with the paints to keep them from getting dry. So they're actually thinned in the pot. So people were seeing me uh, pull from the pot and kind of losing their minds. I do think you should thin your paints, uh, but I mean, if they're if they're thin enough, you don't need to, uh, you know, do it out on the palette and all that as well. But I do have a palette just off to the right of the screen here. And so what I'm doing is is basically just dipping into the thinned out paint which is in the pot and you can see it's pretty pretty thin right there so all right so I'll continue on uh, with the packs as well I'm going to do the thruster just the bottom of the thruster points here this ring at the bottom and then we'll follow into the directional thruster kind of elements of the backpack here so any of these little round ball kind of thrusters and fin controls so these thrusters down here uh, the fin control ball bearings up here and also the thrust jets on the backs of the legs here so just on the back calves thrusters in here as well and continuing along we'll do these little metallic heat sinks And we'll also do the metallic ribbing here under the uh, control fins. We'll then do the pads under the feet. Kind of tough to see here. But we'll do the shock pads underneath the feet. The little struts here that kind of hold the shocks that are actually in there. And then the little ring here that kind of operates everything. We'll also do any of the tubing at the back that supplies the fuel from the calf. I don't know how that works, but uh, supplies the fuel or the power to the thrusters. We'll do the piping 
the power line out to the assault bolter. Let's do that really quick here. And then we'll do the assault bolter itself. So uh, anything that's sticking out here inside the breech here. Okay, and anything that isn't this casing on the outside, we'll do in the lead belcher as well. Now the casing is going to be black here and we're going to do the, uh, the, the bolter shells in kind of a, a gold color. We'll use retributor armor on there in a second. Uh, but we've got a few pieces left and you can actually see that it's pretty guided. Um, you've got a nice kind of guide here. You'll see that this is going to all be our black. And all I need to do now is just go in and do this up like this to make room for the black. And then I'll do the uh, cylinder selector on the inside, which is tough to see. I'll do it on this side. Uh, I'll make sure I get that cylinder selector. A kind of ammo selector there. And anything here in the back. And then I'll also do these little heat sinky, heat sinky kind of center line pieces here that kind of tied in with the rest of the, the bolter. All right, so anything that isn't this casing, this casing, the ammo or the casing around the outside is going to be done in the lead belcher. All right, so we can see here that uh, with all the lead belts are all finished up, I'm really liking the way it's turning out. Now, it was a little messy in some spots, but I mean, I'm going over it with the base Abaddon uh, Abaddon black there. Um, so I'm not too stressed out about it. So I'm going to get going on that right away. So uh, I'm going to do uh, the bolt, the assault bolter, the, the casing on the outside, the little shieldy thing up here, the magazine casing. And I'm also going to go and do these directional fins uh, at the back here. Now, I know it's uh, it's nice to get a little bit of kind of visual contrast on the model. The black does pick that up really nicely, but grab some water here. Um, but one of the things that's uh, really nice, of course, is just breaking up the model just a little bit here. So uh, we'll go over the control surfaces here. Uh, there's four of them. And on the bottom side, I'll make sure I get a good coat, but I'm going to see if I can get that in the camera here. Uh, I'm just going to go around the little metallic ribbing bits there. Just like this. All right. So I'm going to work my way around with those guys. Uh, and in addition to that, grab some here. And in addition to those guys, um, I'm also going to do the shields here up at the front. I'll do them upside down because it's easier to brace them. And going around this little bit of uh, metallic here. I'll probably do a couple thinner coats of this. Yeah, bad and black is one of those ones that gets kind of thick, so I tend to thin it out quite a bit. And just do a couple multiple coats. So I'll do that front and back. And in addition to that, I'll do the casings on the magazines. These guys here. And I'll do the casings on the assault bolters as well. So bring that into focus. And I'll just go around and make sure I've got all of these all done up. Okay, so it's looking really good. The Abaddon Black is all settled in nice here. Uh, and of course, if you make any mistakes, I mean, we're dealing with mostly base paints here and you'll see a couple spots where I've gone over. Uh, you just go back in with your other base color. So here I'd go with Craig Blue or I'd go with Abaddon Black or I'd go in with Lead Belcher, uh, what have you. And I just tidy up as I as I go. Um, even after the wash phase, it kind of hides all that as well. Uh, and right here, you'll see that I, uh, I went back over a little bit with McCraig Blue because the uh, Lead Belcher went a little bit too far. So. Always nice to kind of just keep refining it closer and closer to kind of the ideal of what you're looking for. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. All right, next up, I'm going to take my Abaddon Black and uh, because it's thicker, I'm just going to water it down just a shade on my palette. And then the last piece that I'm going to work on that is black is going to be these little impact kind of boots, cleats, whatever. And I'm going to work my way around the lead belcher here and just make sure that the whole of the the strut is all in the Abaddon black. 
Okay, so with all the black done now on the, the landing skids there, the uh, assault bolters, all of that, uh, in order to get to, you know, everything up to speed kind of pre-wash, uh, we'll do the retributor armor on the uh, magazines, on the shells inside the magazine. And that is going to be uh, just super simple in here. I'll just kind of make sure there's lots of color in there. And then I'll do it the same over here as well. And again, if you go over it all, you can just always touch up with a little bit of uh, a bad and black. All right, looking good. Okay, and then let's do a good clean on the brush here. Uh, because he is a sergeant, uh, we're going to do his uh, helmet in Mephiston red. Give us a good shake. So we'll do the helmet in Mephiston red. And. Tap this on the palette, and that's going to be just super simple. I'm just going to gently kind of layer that in uh, over the helmet here. Now, I don't have too much paint on my brush here. Uh, I'll probably need two coats of this, but I've already got some of the lead belcher inside, so I'm just going to carefully work my way through, and I'll just do a couple thin coats just to get it up to get it up to the color that I'm looking for. All right, with this helmet all done up in Mephiston Red, uh, that, again, that's a pre-wash. We'll uh, come back to it after we do the wash. We'll do the highlights for him. Uh, but I'm going to go to his knee here, and because he's a sergeant, I'm going to layer up a couple thin layers of white scar. And... Yeah, I'm really liking the, the color scheme of this guy. And uh, we're going to do a bit of a little extra heraldry in the third video as well. But um, yeah, I really like the way he's coming together. Nice, bright, strong colors. Now, obviously, it's better to do the thin coats here of the white. Now, the white is kind of the important one to build up slow because it tends to get super clumpy and chunky. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll pull from the, the bottle or pull from the uh, paint pot, and then I'll just tap it onto the surface of my water just to add a little bit of just to add a little bit of water to the uh, the paint itself so it works out pretty well but you just want to build it up nice and slow and if it's thin it dries faster too which is always good now i've got the advantage of these lights here and they're actually pretty toasty so it's uh, almost drying the paint as i put it on so immediately after i put it on it tends to dry pretty quick so i'll build this up as well and then we'll just have one more step Okay, so we're essentially ready for the wash. Uh, the last piece I wanted to do is if you have a clear flying base, um, you might want to paint uh, your, your Inceptor up separately. But I did a brass rod. Uh, there's actually a video that I did on this to kind of give them a little bit more stability because I was tired of the, the rods breaking for me. And some people have had luck, some people haven't. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just to kind of camouflage that rod, I'm going to use some Dryad Bark and that deep kind of rich chocolatey brown, even after it's washed, your eyes just start to really kind of ignore it, which is kind of cool. So uh, I'm just going to paint up the rods for all my guys in this dryad bark right before I wash. Okay, so we've continued on uh, everything kind of matching what we did with the lieutenant there in the video number one. And what we're going to do now is we could kind of reiterate all the way through, but that's uh, just a straight repetition of what we had before. Uh, the one difference, however, from the lieutenant helmet is, uh, oh, sorry, from the lieutenant is this helmet right here, the red helmet. So I'm going to go back in over the majors here with the Mephiston red. And um, again, just the major highlights, leaving all of that shading uh, intact. And rid of this and so I'm just going to go over all the major highlights of the helmet here so uh, just wherever there is no shading and there's a little bit of extra detail in there so I'm just going to go in and pick out that's in the way of the camera uh, I'm just going to go in and pick out around all the major highlights of the helmet and with the Mephiston Red all done, I'm just going to go in now with a little bit of Wild Rider Red, and I'm just going to go over all the edge highlights of the helmet here. And just kind of do a little bit of pop of color and detail to kind of pull that red up. 
So with that highlight finished, uh, we're just going to continue along essentially repeating the same steps that we did with our uh, lieutenant here. So we'll do the blues, uh, we'll highlight the blacks, we'll do the knee pads, all of that. So we'll just, instead of repeating that whole motion, I'll just refer you back off to our part one of the video. And instead of doing that, I'm going to be moving on to our Hellblaster squad next. Uh, and we're going to be working on those plasma incinerators. Okay, so just like we did with our Inceptor up here, we're going to take our Hellblaster guy and we're just going to work on the plasma incinerator piece uh, to him, essentially getting him again right up to that pre-wash stage. Then I'll do a quick wash and then we'll finish off just just the weapon here. Uh, and But the rest of it, again, will echo pretty much everything we've seen with our Lieutenant in our first video. So uh, let's get started right away with this guy. Uh, but again, just bringing him up to the wash stage and then we'll finish the gun off and then we'll just kind of refer everything else back to the, the Lieutenant there in the first video. Okay, so we've got a Hellblaster Trooper here, and I'm um, just going to we'll start on our lead belcher now. As we're doing the lead belcher for the pack and all the other elements there, like we did in the, the first video, uh, at that same time what we would do is we would go into our uh, plasma incinerator part of the model, and I'm just going to do... Uh, all the pieces that aren't going to actually end up having cowling in the end, uh, and that's going to be... Uh, these pieces here now I'm going to ignore the vents across the top we're going to do those with a little bit of color but I'm going to do the entirety of the front of this vent it's a little thin Let's try a bit more so I'll do the front of the plasma incinerator I'll do the the kind of little bit of a handle that he's holding on to here as well try not to kill too much of that blue all right uh, in addition to that I'll do these little kind of power packs down here at the bottom and this is going to be black, the cowling here is going to be black, and the top line is going to be black. But the ribbing up at the top, I'm going to have be the lead belcher there. And then, a bit more paint. And then right after that, uh, I'm going to do the kind of the stock at the back. And everything leading up to the the cowling there. So uh, this is actually going to be black up at the top, but that's okay. Uh, everything kind of leading up to that front cowling there, I'll do in lead belcher. And I'll pick out these little bits and pieces here as well. These little bits and bobs. And then I'll just go over with the uh, Abaddon black after that. So I'll work my way around the incinerator here. Be right back. All right, next up for the plasma incinerator, I'm going to be doing the, the venting on the inside. So we want that kind of cool powered glow. So I'm going to start with Lothern Blue, uh, Lothern Blue, and then I'm going to kind of stack up to Fenrisian Gray. And then we're going to do a dry brush after the wash of our white scar. So uh, let's start working our way through. So uh, Lothern Blue. And I'm just going to go and just where those fins are, Well, just these little kind of radiator fins in here. I'm just going to go in here and dress them up a little bit. Now, uh, we're going to be doing a couple steps that are going to be a little destructive to the black that we're going to end up doing around the outside, but it's uh, a bad and black. It'll just cover it back up, no problems. So I'll start with this uh, Lothern blue here. Okay, next up now we're going to do the Fenrisian gray, and we're just going to do a little bit of a light... Uh, almost like an edge highlight, but we're going to be doing it uh, across just those corners here. So uh, so the Fenrisian Gray, just like an edge highlight, only we're going to go across the corners here. That way we get that little bit of a two-tone in there. Now, again, pretty messy until we get that uh, black all tidied up, but I'll just run that in like that, okay? And then I'll do the top as well. So we're leaving just a little bit of the blue, the deeper blue down below. Okay, and then we'll finish that up with our white scar. And again, same idea as the Fenrisian gray there, but we're just going to do what is essentially an edge highlight question uh, mark over top of those corners, just to give us a little bit of light and brightness to the weapon here. So I want just a little bit of glow on the corners. Maybe a little bit up top here too. 
with a little bit of that other color kind of coming through. All right, so we should have a couple layers of, of tonal difference there. And we'll do now the uh, Abaddon Black, and then we'll come back and wash it. And then we'll just build those some of those colors back up again. Looking good. Okay, so with that tamped down and dried down a little bit here, we're going to do the base in again with uh, Abad uh, sorry, Abaddon Black. And then we're going to do that around the cowling and the handle up at the top, all of that. So super easy and of course it's really going to clean things up significantly here all right so again just going to do, go through any of the pieces that kind of stand out as protective so I'm going to work my way around all of the metallic bits here just taking my time uh, and of course we can always do multiple thin coats it's always a much cleaner way to do it So I'll work my way around the, the cowling on both sides here. Again, just tidying up the top of that, that radiator that really heat kind of radiates off. And then I'm also going to do the, the sides, the base of this handle across the top and then the cowling here as well. All right, so I'll hammer on with these couple of thin coats. Okay, so now I've just gone in and tidied up a little bit. I did the uh, Abaddon Black all around. Uh, I also went in and just made sure that I had that gradation of my lines just the way I wanted it. So I went back in a little bit with the Lothurn Blue at the bottom and then a little bit of the Fenrisian Gray and then just kind of topped up just little bits of the whites around the edges. Um, and I got it to a point where I was actually pretty happy with it. So I uh, tidied up a little bit of the bolt gunny parts. Probably still needs a little bit of work, but I'll get that on the next stage after the wash. But I think I'm pretty satisfied with getting it to that wash stage now. So uh, the other side note I wanted to mention was that all my troops are going to be kind of echoing uh, some of the Praetorian stuff that we have in the Mark III armor and, and kind of the pre-heresy ultramarine paint schemes that they have on Forge World. So all their face masks are going to be white as opposed to our lieutenants, which have kind of the white and red. And each of our sergeants, which is going to have the the red, the straight red, um, each of our basic troops is going to have just this kind of white, uh, this, this white mask with the blue helmet. So hopefully it'll give us a little bit of contrast. I'm also going to be doing some additional stuff with the heraldry as well. So uh, I'm going to wash this guy now. Now um, I'm going to again refer to the first video. Uh, this is all assuming that you've seen the first video, but uh, I'm just going to hit him with my wash now that 25% uh, Agrax, 25% uh, um, uh, null oil and the other 25% is going to be just regular cheapy floor wax. So I'm going to hit this guy with the wash, uh, make sure I don't get any pooling or anything like that and I'll be right back and we'll finish off the plasma incinerator. All right, so we've let the wash sit for about 45 minutes or so, and uh, you can see it's a little bit shiny, uh, as you can see, uh, and that'll actually get uh, matted down with the paints, of course, that go over top, and then we'll finish it off with a purity seal after, uh, which will give it kind of a nice kind of matte finish. So, uh, like in the way it turned out, actually, it's uh, it almost doesn't even need this extra dry brush. You can see that we've got, um, you know, a little bit of the lines that have come up in here uh, as a result of the wash inside the, uh, the vents up at the top here. But uh, yeah, really, really liking it. Now, uh, just to finish it up in, a, in an additional way, uh, before we kind of base coat over with the Abaddon Black, uh, I'm just gonna give it just a little tiny white um, dry brush, uh, sorry, a white dry brush with the, the white scar. And I'm really liking it. Like it's nice, it's bright, it's, it's vibrant. And of course, once we finish up the rest of the model, it'll stand out as well. So I'm just gonna grab some of this. And uh, of course, dry brushing is super simple. I'm gonna take my cloth and I'm just gonna work the brush onto the cloth until there's like next to nothing coming off and then I'm just very gently going to go over the edge of the venting here now you'll see I am going over the uh, Abaddon Black a little bit but that's okay because Abaddon Black is base paint and I'm just gonna go back over top of it again uh, but you know I'm not going too crazy with this but I just want to get that nice little bit of a dry brush over top and you can see I get the white I get all the color but I don't get inside those little those little uh, indents there, the little bits of extra kind of darker detail. And that's it. So next up though, um, since I've got that done and since it's a dry brush, uh, I'm actually gonna swap out brushes and I'm going to do uh, the Abaddon Black and I'm just gonna tidy that up a little bit. I'll grab some of this, do, 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 bit of water. I'm dropping pencils and brushes. Uh, okay, so uh, then I'm going to go in here and just touch up where I've dry brushed over 
with the white. And if I'm super careful, I won't make too much of a mess. And yeah. Okay, so once this is finished, I'm going to finish up the uh, Abaddon black on this. But you can see here that it tidies up really nicely uh, because I've got black and then it's washed again and all that. Okay, so after the Abaddon black, I'm just going to take a little bit of white and just overbrush on the mask a little bit here, just on the higher details as well. So I've got the I've got the gun all done up with Abaddon black after the dry brush. I've got the white on the mask, uh, just doing the overbrush on that as well. And then what I'll do is after that, I'll just kind of refer things off to our video one, our lieutenant video, and I'll just finish him up exactly the same as the lieutenant, obviously without the knee pad or anything like that. And so I'll finish these guys up and then I'll move on to the heraldry stuff in the third video. But for now, uh, we're done with this guy. We'll just kind of touch him up to match the other. Okay, so now that we've got our Inceptors and our Hellblasters up to speed, uh, the last guy in our video is going to be our Captain, our Mon Capitain of the group. And again, just like the others, I've got him up to kind of a pre-wash stage. Uh, he's based in blue. I went in with the uh, Retributor armor to get him up to the normal stuff, like all the uh, uh, the Aquilae at the, the, the chest, the, the, the eagle wings and all that, uh, any of the fetishes and any of the kind of the ornate elements that are in there as well, even this little skull here at the back. Back. But I want to continue on a little bit here with the Retributor Armor and I want to do something that's unique to this guy here and that is going to be our Power Sword and he's got a pretty monster awesome one there. So uh, what I'm going to do is take my Retributor Armor, give it a good shake here, and I'm just going to go in and make sure that I've got uh, just the hilt of the sword uh, down here and up here. And when I come back a little bit later, well, actually, you know, I'll do them now, and then I'll come back and go over them with the lead belcher. It's a lot easier sometimes to do the finer details first, and then continue on with the others. So I'll go all the way around the hilt of the sword here, and I'm going to come back with the, the lead belcher and do that. And in addition to that, we're going to do his, his big iron halo up at the top as well. And so that one's gonna be pretty easy again, just a nice light coat on the iron halo. Um, I love the Retributor Armor paint. It's, uh, it goes on really nicely. And uh, even when it's thinned down, it, uh, it does some pretty nice coverage on our guy. All right, was there anything else? I don't think so. Um, the, the filigree, the kind of the design that's on the cloak here, we'll come back and touch that up. Uh, in a minute, but uh, I'll finish up the hilt and the iron halo and we'll be right back. Okay, so with the gold all done on the iron halo and the hilt of the sword, uh, we're now going to move on to um, uh, lead belcher and we're going to do that for uh, the main body of the sword, obviously. But uh, most of the mechanical stuff that we you know, typically see is, uh, you know, that was on the Lieutenant and all that, that's all kind of filled in inside the arms, anything kind of functional. But there's a bunch of other stuff on here as well. So uh, let's start off with the sword. And I'm going to leave these little metallic leads in place here. And I'm just going to coat the sword in lead belcher. In addition to the top of the sword, we're also going to use uh, the main hilt of the sword here, the hand guard here. Or sorry, not the hand guard, uh, our place that our little hand holds onto there. So they've got a metallic kind of uh, hilt to the sword there. And in addition to that, we're gonna do the chains. Man, I love the chest on this guy. Um, Chris pointed it out that it looks like a silverback, silverback gorilla, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, I can totally see it as well. Uh, and any of the scroll works that are down on the side. So I left a fetish in um, in gold, we'll be doing the lead belcher kind of all the way through. All right, continuing on, uh, we'll see here on his feet, he's got some pretty cool features here. These are actually old school um, Devastator Marine. It's like the long fangs from the Space Wolf pack. They're, they're pretty sweet. So it looks like these little, they almost look like uh, castle battlements there. But just the studs in the on the feet. We'll go through and do all that. The guy's rocking some killer elevators. 
and then we'll move on to the backpack. So following along what we've done with all the other guys, we're going to do this uh, disc on the reactor at the back. We'll do that first. Uh, and then we'll do this section. Now I tried to find a place where this uh, kind of broke, but it didn't. These lines actually just go into these, uh, these clips up here. So I'm actually going to do the whole pack up here in lead belcher. So this massive kind of vent raised area is all going to be in lead belcher. I'm going to make sure I get inside the, the vents there. And again, as we did with our Lieutenant, uh, I'm going to go in here and get this all in lead belcher. So it'll be that silver color on his pack. And continuing along with the pack, uh, like all the smaller packs, cause very similar to the smaller Space Marine packs, we're going to do these side pieces these side bolts in lead belcher to make it silver. And I'm actually going to leave this a little bit because it's built up and I'm going to have it uh, black as all our cowlings uh, on all our weapons. Uh, but I want the functional elements to be that silver as well. Then we'll continue along with the tube down underneath and we'll go all the way around this skull. And to add a bit more depth again, any of these panels back here, I'm going to do black, but uh, we can go lead belcher now just up and down the ammo feed. So we'll do the whole ammo feed. Okay, in addition to that, uh, we'll do the, this kind of auto bolt, bolt pistol craziness there. Uh, we'll do that guy in uh, lead belcher as well. Very similar to the bolt rifles that we had before. Uh, we'll do the breech opening here. Uh, this is all going to be black in this space here. So we'll just go kind of all the functional bits. We'll work our way through. And the last bit of lead belcher is going to be on the big cable feeds uh, just down here behind the back leg. And that should give us a nice solid base for all of our silver metallics. After all our metallics are essentially done, uh, save the ones on the cape, we're coming back to those. Uh, we're going to use our Abaddon Black and we're just going to do a few pieces on him. He's actually uh, doesn't have much in the way of leather or anything like that. so. Uh, it's actually gonna be pretty easy, pretty easy pickings for this guy. Uh, so I'll go in here and I'll do the casing for the kind of rapid bolt fire pistol deal of death and doom and destruction. And of course, if I go over, I can always touch up with uh, with lead belcher again. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect the first time. Uh, obviously, if you make a mistake and people are human, it also allows you to go a little bit faster if you kind of just get the major color and major elements down. And then, uh, you know, to get that picture perfect paint job at the end, uh, you just touch up, so it works out pretty well. Okay, next up for the black uh, is going to be this little component back here, this, this piece that sits out. So trying not to get uh, any of that, try not to cover any of that silver. Perfect. And then on this little accelerators, ammo sorter, feeder thingamadoo, uh, we're going to do uh, the black on this as well, and then the black on these little pieces all around the outside. This is the part where I would normally say we're going to paint the inside of the cloak with Screaming Skull. The camera ate the video, however, so now you've got me after the fact coming in and saying, gently paint the inside of his cape with Screaming Skull, paying careful attention not to overwrite or overpaint the filigree at the corners of each of the cape. And then we'll take our Mephiston Red here and we'll just do a nice clean coat on the back of that, the back of that cape. Not uh, cape, cape robe. Yeah, this was two words in my head at the same time. So we'll just do a nice, easy coat on the back of that robe. Okay, so now that we've got the robe all done, this cape back here. Uh, we've got a nice couple thin coats of Mephiston Red on the back and some Screaming Skull on the front. I just kind of built it up nice and gradual. There's these little pieces of filigree here on the captain and we're going to do those in Retributor Armor. And uh, yeah, I really liking the way the guy's coming together. The color scheme is nice, it's bright. Um, there's going to be lots of contrast, of course, when we wash things down. Uh, so it'll be quite nice to see. So with these filigree pieces here, I'm just going to take my brush and just very carefully just kind of touch over 
as I throw the model around, I'm just going to touch over these filigree pieces in here. And if I do go over, for whatever reason, I can always come back in with the other color, the Screaming Skull or the Mephiston Red, and I can tidy it up. Okay, so our Captain, all the main color blocking of all the primary colors is in. The little filigree bits are in here as well. And again, there's spots that I've gone over a little bit, but I can just come back and touch those up. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to start with the wash. And um, of course, this is the infamous wash, seen a thousand times now, but it's 25% uh, null, 25% agrax, and 50% floor wax, which is pretty cool. And I'm just going to wash the guy, uh, wash our Captain here. And then when I get back, I'm going to go over uh, all the pieces that are unique to the captain uh, and I'm just going to refer you know the rest of the armor things like that uh, towards our lieutenant video uh, the first video in the series so I'll continue on with this I'll make sure I don't get too much in the way of pooling and we'll be right back to work on all those unique to the captain elements okay so the wash is kicked in I'm loving the the depth the detail looking really really good and now we're just going to go back over with some of the majors. Now, again, I'm only going to pick on the elements that are unique to the captain. Everything else will refer off to our first video. So uh, for the cape, let's do the cape and we're going to do Mephiston Red again. And we're just going to go over the major elements of that cape. So uh, I want to make sure that I leave all of that shading wherever possible. So I'm just going to go over the very high end parts of this cape. And I'm just going to go in kind of a streaky motion. But I want to make sure that I just keep as much of that color and I kind of go with the flow of the cape as I can. So keeping lots of that recessed shading. And I'm just going to work my th way through here with the Mephiston Red on the majors of this cape. All right, so with the cape done in the Mephiston Red now, we're just going to hit the actual real highlights, like the very highest edges, with Wild Rider Red. And we're just going to go over the very tops of these guys uh, just to give it that little punch of color. Okay, and then uh, on top of that, we'll just do an edge highlight around the bottom. Now, um, you know, I might switch to a smaller brush for that. So we'll just do the edge highlight along the bottom with our Wild Rider Red. So we'll just do a nice, nice, easy edge along the bottom. An alternative to the edge is you can just feather it like this and it just kind of extends it in a little bit just blends it a little bit better so actually you know what? i might just continue on with that feathering i like that okay so with that wild rider red it really brings that red to life which is awesome uh nice bright high contrast uh look great on the table uh and since this guy is going to be marching at the enemy most of the times you get to benefit from that that beautiful patch of color there so really really cool so next up we're going to do the inside now um of the robe now it's pretty mucky after the the wash but that's okay we're just going to go in with screaming skull we're not going to do an additional highlight on top of that because the the skull gives a nice kind of linen-y look to it um so we're going to use the screaming skull in side here and it's going to be the exact same thing we're just going to go over the major highlights of the robe leaving in the depth uh wherever we can now it's a little bit tricky to get in here but just take your time uh and of course you can just build up lots of light light coats as you go Okay, so with the last bit of coloring done, our cape is finished. Um, you can always go back in and touch up if you mess up a little bit. Obviously, um, you don't have to paint super perfect every single time, uh, but uh, you can always go in back and touch up with some of your primary colors. But, um, so we finished off the cape, which is great. Uh, then just kind of continued along what we did with that uh, first video there where we uh, you know, worked on our blues and all that. So the Altdorf Guard blue has been applied all over the model. And now we're going to get to that highlight pass where we do the goldy colors with fulgurite copper uh, so loving the way these have turned out it's looking really really sharp um, and um, again just to kind of pick out on the things uh, that we're playing with for this guy uh, that makes him unique of course uh, he's got a different little fetish down here so we can actually just uh, kind of go over top of the fetish there which is fine um, and he's got a whole bunch of different iconography but it's all essentially the same what I did want to do though is look at the iron halo so uh, I'll go in here and I'll just do the edge highlight over the iron halo okay and just grab all our little spiky dues here okay and then um, obviously you want to leave a little bit of that uh, kind of low light down at the bottom there and you get that nice kind of gradation of color as I blast 
as I blast, because I talk with my hands, I blast the backpack. Um, so yeah, so it looks really nice. Um, the other bit of fulgurite copper that we want to apply is to the, the, the hilt of the sword there. So I'll grab this and I'll just highlight the hilt of the sword. Okay, and the skull on there and a little bit of iconography. And if you're super gentle and careful, we can do the leads going up to the sword as well. And we'll do the back. And then again, the leads up here, just super careful. All right, so we just wanna add a little bit of pop to that gold. And then I'll just go over the edge of the filigree for all of our different pieces in here. So uh, super gentle, super light kind of overbrush, just going over the absolute majors of this. Perfect. All right, so I'll continue along with the rest of our uh, guy here. So I'll do all of the uh, iconography, the fetishes, the, the knees, uh, the shoulder pads, everything like that. And we'll be right back to work on the silver parts of the metallics. Okay, so we got the gold all highlighted up now and uh, really liking the sharpness. I, I mean, that gold and blue looks just freaking awesome. I mean, this is the big attraction to the Thousand Suns and the Ultramarines in the first place. So uh, we're moving on now to our Rune Fang steel uh, layer. So we're just basically gonna highlight, uh, just as we've done a ton, uh, anything to do with the commander, uh, the captain here. And we're going to highlight uh, all his unique stuff. So um, obviously we've got, you know, anything that's functional, things like that, but uh, we'll just work our way around. So we'll start with the chains down here and I'm just going to do a quick overbrush over top of the chains. And then on top of that, uh, his little canister here with his scroll in it, we'll do that in the Rune Fang uh, steel as well. Just give it a little bit of an extra highlight. Okay, and then continuing on, we're going to do his, um, let's work on his pack. So on the pack, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's highlighted just like all the other ones. So I'll just do a ring around the outside and a little kind of cross hatch in the middle there to give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of pop and then um, at the top we've got that grill and so I'm just going to do an edge highlight around the uh, the grill up here Work my way around and then I'll do these little reaction -y thrusters at the back here and then kind of the fittings on the backpack so the same as the others, except we've got a few extra pieces here. So we'll just make sure we get all these fittings, uh, the ones that we did up in the lead belcher. We'll make sure those all get done in the Rune Fang steel. And then we'll do the ammo feed on the gauntlet bolter. I'm just gonna high edge highlight each of these blocks just at the top. And then we'll do the gauntlet bolter itself. And then of course, we'll just touch on these power feeds at the back here. Just give them a little pop of color. And then very carefully, we'll reach in and just touch the points on the mask that need a little bit of a highlight. And if you get into too tight of a space in there, then of course you can always go back in and rewash if you take it nice and gentle. All right, he's got these little guys up here, which I might bring out as well, just to kind of give a little bit of uh, features to his face. And then finally, these bottom little casings around his boots. We'll just do an edge on those as well. So lastly, um, normally I'd go over the power sword here, but uh, I'm actually going to do the power sword in our third video when we tackle all the heraldry and all the other elements as well. So it's going to look a little plain for the next little bit here. Uh, but uh, other than that, we're kind of finished up all of the silver. And of course, I'll just go around and do a dummy check to make sure I didn't miss anything. 
Okay, so with all the metallics done, again, tons of pop looking really, really good. I did the dummy check, went around, actually tidied up a little bit of the Abaddon black, uh, just because, you know, things get a little messy when you're when you're putting things together. So, um, did a little tidying up with the Abaddon black, just made sure I got all a bunch of spots. There's a couple spots on the robe that I, uh, I tagged with silver as well, so I just went over and touched that up. Uh, just kind of always constantly just moving a little bit towards, uh, towards kind of that ideal, which is great. So, uh, next up we're going to, uh, um, do our highlight on our black with our Eschen gray and uh, not much black left on this model uh, we've got we've got just uh, a little bit of course we've got the bolter the gauntlet bolter here and we're just gonna do a nice edge highlight on the gauntlet bolter and then do it in here as well and then of course we'll do the um, the there's a box at the back of the pack here and so i'll just go and grab that let's do that nice and tidy and then we've got this kind of this cyclic feeder here now there's a couple layers to it so i'm just going to do the the front layer this ring here so i'll do this four pieces and then we've got a band that goes across the top and I'll just do that in the gray as well. And then you can just see kind of the top of uh, one of the other bits of the ring there. So I'll do that. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? No, I think that is it for black on the model. So uh, that actually concludes pretty much all the specialty stuff with our with our captain here uh everything else i'm just going to again continue along what was in the first video i'm going to highlight the blue um i'll just do kind of a, a dummy check on a couple other things his helmet's just going to be an overbrush of the blue with the edge highlighting so just an overbrush over the the, the mask there but essentially all the same techniques we've been using before and then i'll use the black line pen anywhere that two colors meet and anywhere that um uh, anywhere where two colors meet and anywhere of course where there's a, a kind of a um, an indentation or a, a a joining of two pieces things like that so uh, i'll continue along and we'll be right back to kind of see all three of the models uh, done up together all right and so we are now done with our three models here so we've covered the hellblaster squad so we did the plasma incinerators and the masks uh with the captain i just kind of tidied up i added the mask in here as well uh, i didn't like the fact that it was just it was just so much blue so um i wanted to make sure these kind of matched anyway so uh why wouldn't the captain be any different uh so i did his knee pad and his uh his face mask here and that's going to be exactly like the forge world praetorians there so it's going to work out really really well we've also got our inceptor uh, sergeant here as well he's looking pretty solid uh, loving the colors like the the bright reds the of course the, the the cape on the captain as well so the bright reds the golds and the blues are oh, awesome awesome contrast so i really like the way they came together and i think that's going to be it for this video so this was the second part in our video the third part uh, we're going to cover our uh, you know primaris ancient with the banner we're going to be looking at heraldry and iconography so the pauldrons uh the hip plates here on the captain uh their knee pads all of that stuff. We'll be finishing off the purity seals. We'll complete the captain's power sword, which of course we just left as lead belcher and washed. Uh, we'll be working on the eye lenses and we'll be applying decals. So really excited to get this army finished and uh, yeah, really liking the way it's coming together. So uh, thanks a lot for watching guys. Uh, obviously, if you hit the like button, if you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos just like this, or if you want to catch our third part in the series, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and even the notify button and you get all the notifications of all the future videos. So uh, thanks again for watching. I hope it was of value to you guys and we'll catch you in the next video.